about her on the side of making a movie. 80% of you thought XRB to the moon. Defending champions from Cup 2 would take this series, but making a movie bring out their patented Rogue Mage Priest composition to see if they can take game one. Yeah, and this matchup could be a preview for what's to come at BlizzCon. Both these teams running their main setups that they're known for. Acro in midfield right now taking a little bit of damage from Zipa and Blizzo. It's going to be up to making a movie to make sure they can set up nice crowd control chains on the Looney to try to take Zipa or Blizzard down. Acro already has Shadow Blades rolling. He's looking to start an attack here shortly. Maro double blinks in to secure the Polymorph, but Acro gets disarmed. Perfect defense by Blizzo in this position, and likely Zipai will survive as a result. It allowed him to access his defensive cooldown Astral Shift, so good teamwork between Blizzo and Zipai, but making a movie keep the chain going, forcing Looney's Trinket. Now there's a situation with no Trinket and no Astral Shift. Smoke Bomb available. What making a movie need to work through is Zipai's Trinket. As soon as they get Zipai's Trinket, they have a clear win condition. Yeah, Looney actually charges in, bashes up Ratapai, manages to get up that human racial out of the way, so not going to have another trinket available for another minute, but here's another setup coming in from making a movie. A lot of burst damage over onto Zipai. He trinkets out. That was the smoke bomb coming in. Zipai ultimately does stabilize. Looney doesn't even trade off the iron bark in that exchange, but tree form was uh, activated. So XRB is going to feel, be feeling very safe while that cooldown is uh, available. And this is what I like by XRB. They played defense. They stopped the initial attack. Then they immediately switched to Ratapai and try and force the issue and get more cooldowns. XRB to the moon. They play calculated. Looney has stepped up so much over the years to this point where I'm really curious to see how Botar performs because right now I would say Looney has exceeded what even Botar was able to achieve in the past in terms of his ability to predict how much damage is coming in, what cooldowns do I need to trade, when can we get aggressive all around XRB to the moon are looking like a strong team and a BlizzCon champion potentially this year. Yeah, you can really tell the coordination between XRB to the moon, um, Looney and Zipai. Anytime Looney gets caught into the crowd control, Acro, yes, the shadow step, use the kidney shot. Zipai is just gone. He knows that it's going to be difficult for Acro to reconnect, so he's behind the pillar. He's able to avoid so much damage, and by the time they actually find damage on Zipai, Looney's already out of the crowd control, and he's going to get topped off basically instantly. All right, we see another swap to Ratapai. XRB to the moon. Know that the crowd control diminishing returns aren't available for Looney, so they get aggressive. They go after the healer, try to burn more mana. They've got a significant lead at this point. Their defensive cooldowns are rotating up. XRB to the moon are looking like they're going to lock this win in, making the movie have one big punch in about 13 seconds. If they don't net a kill on that, they're inevitably going to be falling too far behind. Here comes the first attack. They need to pull an astral shift off the back of this. Zipai's holding on to it. It's not enough damage. Make in a movie are in dire straits. Looney pre-iron bark that go. Blind gets traded out there by Acro. Looney trinkets out, but that iron bark was insane before the kidney shot. Z5 is going to be tanking enough, basically not using the astral shift like you said. And now Ratapai, he's running on fumes. He's got about 5% mana left. Ooh. Looney charges in once again, gets the bash. That's his second trinket he's gotten from Ratapai. And now if Blitzo can land a full stun and Z5 can connect, Ratapai is going to be in so much trouble. They don't even need to land a stun at this point. Ratapai has got nothing. He's running on fumes. He needs help. Mara needs to be spamming out polymorphs, but even if he does, they don't have the mana to extend the match. They have to get a kill. Zipai knows that. He's just going to Astral Shift, make himself tanky, and push all in for the kill. Ratapai's got nothing but this barrier to hang on, but with Blizzo and Zipai just crunching down, I'm not sure how much longer Ratapai can keep this up. Mara was trying to punish that preemptive play by Zipai. Zipai's going all in, now using the stone form as well. He knows that Ratapai's on the ropes. He's committing everything to take him down, making a movie fall in game number one. And that will be game one going in favor of XRB to the moon. And XRB are just so good at rotating through their cooldowns. They don't overlap them. If Zipai gets smoke bombed at the start of the game, he's only using that trinket. He's not using the astro shift as well, like uh, an inexperienced shaman might do. Looney, he's saving. Uh, uh, as we do head into game two here, Ashamings for making a movie of the team that fall first in game one. Let's see if they can pull it back in game two. I think the only strategy that they can really effectively win on a large map is killing Blizzo. So they can go after the Enhancer Shaman or the Druid early game in an attempt to bait Blizzo to think he's safe. He can go into battle stance or bait him to have to trinket to save one of his teammates. And they really need to save the smoke bomb because that's their most effective way to execute a kill on a large map. They can drag the warrior into a very overextended position, smoke bomb, deny line of sight on Looney, and then as a result, remove a lot more of his mana. They set up crowd control on Looney, 
good triple CC. They are going after the Warrior. This has to be the best strategy for making a movie overall. They initiate with tons of damage right off the bat. Zipai trying to recover through this deadly assault. Blizzard did. He just goes down. He, oh, he thought he could be greedy in that position, but Morrow punishes him with that ray of frost channeled out of range after the shimmer blink. Well played by making a movie. Perfect execution, perfect strategy, tying the series up one to one. Yep, that will be a tied up series here. Make uh, should trinket. The problem is, if Blizzard trinkets, he's gonna get smoke bombed. So here, Zipai can trinket and tremor the fear and kind of weather the storm, uh, or Blizzard can trinket and leap out. And there, Blizzard should have also used Die by the Sword much, much sooner. He's greeting, uh, holding on to this. So. Um, Another thing I just wanted to highlight on this map is that Akarols and Maru could definitely go after Looney a lot more on small quarters like this. So we could potentially keep our eyes open for a switch onto Looney uh, where they could really accelerate the game if he doesn't see that coming. That's the mind games that uh, making a movie need to play for. They did an all-in on Blizzo, which is the most effective strategy on a big map. Now their most effective strategy is maybe an all-in on Looney. So XRB need to make sure they're in the right frame of mind. Last game it was all about protect Blizzo, but now it may be the case that they need to protect Looney. Looney actually opening with a bash on Morrow into a hex. So let's see if Morrow decides to ice block this now. He's sitting through it, which is allowing Blizzo into z -Pi to start ramping up pressure and get on target. They go for the kidney shot. Looks likely that they'll be getting... He tried to war banner, but the kill off the war banner. He blade storms. Perfect time blade storm by Blizzo to stall out that stun lock. He was expecting him to go after him, but still he's under responding. This is basically an all in. He manages to make it out alive. He's running the Zelzax Veiled Eye as well. XRB to the Moon playing full defensive trinkets against the Subtlety Rogue, which is a very good strategy, as we pointed out time and time again. If the Subtlety Rogue doesn't kill you in a stun, he's probably not going to kill you, so that tank trinket allows you to survive. Yep, very, very important here for XRB to the Moon to have that solid defense, and I think that's a good adaptation from Blizzo. Making a movie, their best strategy is... Um, catching XRB to the moon off guard. Looney now potentially going into the full ring of frost, but no, Blizzo's there to deny. Full blind goes out onto Looney. Smoke bomb now onto Blizzo. He still uh, has his trinket, and there's really no damage. I feel like that was a wasted opportunity. You can see Zipai doesn't have his trinket. That might have been an opening for making a movie, but they decided to basically throw it away onto Blizzo and really don't get much. That was a bad smoke bomb frankly, for making a movie, and they seem to be the ones on the clock, although mana is actually in their favor. I still think it's likely that they are the ones on the clock. Now that uh, XRB to the moon have broken up the offense, it's time to go after the healer. Ratapai's now got to deal with that. There's a ton of damage. He trades out pain suppression to recover throughout this attack, and XRB to the moon say, okay, that's pain suppression. Now we're going to switch targets. Blizzo goes after Maro, trying to force Ratapai to use Powered Shield, one of his most expensive heals. Burn the mana bar a bit quicker to tie it up with Looney. I'd like to see Looney pair his Innervate and Tree of Life together, so he doesn't spend too much mana with that, but he needs to be careful that he uses the Tree of Life when he actually needs it. He can't just use it right now against a Subtlety Rogue. He needs to kind of wait for the setup. Morrow Ice Blocks aggressively. He's not going to be the kill target, but these offensive Ice Blocks potentially could be punished. Nice crowd control here by making a movie. It's a clean setup. Lizzo stalls it out, though, with a Storm Bolt and a Disarm on Acro. Blizzo's play when he's the target now has is definitely a lot more on point than in the last match. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be a, in trouble at all in this matchup. XRP to the moon, they responded to making movie strategy basically perfectly at this point. Ratapai, he's falling behind on mana. Looney's not over hotting which he was at the beginning of the game, making sure he had full hots on Zipai and Blizzo. So making movie really couldn't find any opportunities now that he knows his team's safe. He's able to stabilize his mana. Ratapai falling a little bit behind Blizzo and Zipai all over him in this situation. That's the last defensive cooldown that Ratapai has. He throws out the power of Baron. This is, you know, making a movie. They don't really have that much time left. I would have liked to see a switch to Looney in that stun. They caught him out of bear farm with no trinket. Usually as Rogue Mage, if you're going to kill a Druid, that's the situation that you're going to kill the Druid in. Instead, they look to crowd control chain him and go after a target that still has a trinket, still has a die by the sword, and still has an enhancement shaman healing him. I feel like the targeting there was a bit off for making a movie. They're slowly falling behind. The only thing that's still even remotely in their favor is that Looney's mana is relatively equal. Uh, Zipai now pulling the trigger on that Ascendance. Ratapai doesn't have much to deflect. He needs support from his team. Maro doing his best to back him up. Snaring with the Frost Novas and the Polymorphs. That was good teamwork by Maro to crowd control Zipai through his most powerful cooldown. Yeah, Looney pushes in, uh, potentially looking for a bash over on Maro, but realizing he needs to keep his team stable. There's a full blind over on the Looney. Sitting it for now. Maybe making a movie can capitalize on this, but Looney wants to hold on to that trinket. Is there any follow-up CC? No. No follow-up coming in from making a movie, so Looney's able to comfortably sit that blind. He actually runs into the Ring of Frost, or the Ring of Frost in a thin air coming in from Morrow, so 
Uh, nicely done there. Maybe just realize that if you get put, up, put on PolyDR um, with full hots on his team, he could basically waste making a movie's time. So now they can't get him into a full polymorph for a little while longer. Maybe a very intelligent play coming from Looney. Shadow Blades, Shadow Fiends. These three-minute powerful all-in cooldowns are available for making a movie. They're trying to make a play with the smoke bomb, but z not even trinketing. Blizzo lands a perfectly timed double intimidation shot. Looney's got free form rolling. This is 30 seconds of go, go, go time for XRB. They've got Ratapai on the clock. No mana left, and they're pushing in to put him down here in game number three. Yeah, Ratify's in so much trouble. He gets interrupted, He's spamming out the powered shields. Morrow and Acro trying to create some pressure here, but unfortunately, Morrow just has to throw polymorphs out to keep Ratify alive. There's a kidney shot over on the Looney. Morrow gets spell reflected on his polymorph, gets dispelled out. Full Ring of Frost now secured on the Looney. Zephi has the astral shift. He drops a grounding, avoiding a lot of that Frost Mage damage. It's going to be line of sighting, looking for a hex on Morrow. Going to be no follow up. Actually, a nice sap coming in from Acro, assisting Morrow there, but unfortunately, the damage is just not available for making a movie. Ratapai now into the full bash, gets the barrier out on that. Very nicely done to keep him alive, but <laughs> he's got no mana left. I mean, they survived the power play with the Tree of Life. Ratapai's got pain suppression for the next stun, but I don't think XRB to the Moon are even going to need to a stun. They could switch between Acro. They've got two targets at low health. Ratapai's got no mana left to heal through it. They stormbled Acro. Morrow has been the MVP during this entire period of time that Ratapai basically has nothing, keeping Zipai and Blizzo off them with these polymorphs. But Zipai has equally been getting these hexes that are well timed, allowing his team to get a lot more uptime. Ratapai's got Dark Archangel and Ice Form for Morrow. They need to punch a kill through a defensive cooldown at this point. They don't have any other options. They don't have any amount of time left. Uh, maybe just all in Looney, hope he makes a mistake. That's basically the only way I see making a movie win in this position. Ratapai paints suppression to Stormbolt. They go for the blind play, but the, where's the damage? Now they go for the stun on Blizzo. He can easily trink it. If he really even wants to, he can die by the sword. I mean, Ratapai's got nothing. He winches the Shadow Men. More interrupts available. There's no pressure for making a movie. They're in dire straits, desperation mode at this point. Triple fear, right by doing whatever he can, but Blizzo knows that it's over. He's going in battle stance. There should be almost no threat. Uh, there's no smoke bomb. XRB to the moon. Perfect defense here on Runes of Lordaeron as they finally push Ratapai over, moving to match point. Here's a little bit. And Zipai aggressively pushed onto Ratapai. Ratapai is going to have an easy time landing that fear because Zipai is right next to him, of course. And then Morrow, of course, in this position here uh, where he's kind of in between Looney and Zipai. And the main thing to look for here is Acrolodes. Acrolodes, 20 seconds left on his trinket right there. And this is the big play here, or one of them because he did it several times, Blizzo. But this is one of the moments that I picked out. You can see there, Kidney Shot, Ring of Frost, Fear, Clean CC. And there, Acronauts get storm bolted right as uh, as uh, Ratapai uses that fear, and then he follows that up with a disarm, meaning that Blizzo cannot be stunned. And if Blizzo cannot be stunned, well, Maro can't use his frozen orb, and when Maro can't use his frozen orb, the damage is very, very low on the side of making a movie. So once you've gone through uh, setups like that then you can start going offensive like they're doing right here and then at this point it's pretty much clean up you can see Ratapai's mana bar is empty Morrow is hexed uh, Looney is out of line of sight casting that tranquility just keeping his team loading up into potentially the final game of this series upper bracket both these teams will compete later today or on championship Sunday but XRB are one game away from securing themselves in that upper bracket final but they have shown already that they can get caught off guard I think on Tolveron Arena is the largest map in the pool that making a movie should employ the kind of run and stun strategy where they've got crowd control, they go in for damage. As soon as they don't, Acro starts kiting away and using that throw dagger to try and keep up a little bit of pressure while still avoiding a lot of damage. Yeah, blind sap on Looney. Dark Archangel gets pulled out by Ratapai. A lot of burst over onto Zipai. Iron Bark going to be used by Looney as he trades out his trinket and Iron Bark to keep his team aggressive, keep them stable, but still a lot more pressure coming in from making a movie. Nice grounding totem by Zipai that soaked up Morrow's Ebon Bolt and removed a lot of potential damage for making a movie. So far, Ratapai has been under decent amount of pressure from XRB. They're just not able to get away. Those are staying on target. Looking for a hex off the back of that wind shear. Gets kicked by Acro. Nice interrupt by Acro. Good teamwork to allow Morrow to stay open. Going for a ray of frost now. And this is what they need to employ as assassination. They don't have 
have the stun the healer, stun the DPS, but they've got stun the DPS and pump a ton of damage. But they need to focus more on avoiding them. Like now, Acro is trying to retreat away using the uh, Fan of Knives to get some spread pressure and avoid being attacked. They need to protect Ratapai, keep Zpai off of him as much as possible, or he's going to be burning too much mana, try and extend Blizzo around the corner like they have in this position. Looney's repositioned. There's no Trinket on Looney, actually. I'd almost like to see a, a swap to him at some point and crowd control Zpai. They've got good, consistent damage on Blizzo. I think the assassination change was a needed one for making a movie. Yeah, Stoneform gets traded out by Blizzo, so they are going to be playing the Alliance instead of the Horde. Stoneform is going to be able to remove the bleeds as well as the poison effects that Acro provides, reducing a lot of incoming damage. So XRB is going to be able to rotate through that as the defensive. Marl pulled out a lot of damage there at the with the ice form, uh, with the Comet Storm over on the Blizzard and Zipai, and I like what Making a Movie is doing. This is exactly how they need to play. Looney is basically even on mana now. Ratapai caught into the full bash. They might be able to take advantage of this and get some pressure rolling, but Ratapai manages to find the penance and top himself off. So far, Making a Movie stabilized. Zipai caught in a stun lock. Looney using Tranquility around the corner to try and top him. Gets caught in a blind with no Ooh. trinkets. He trinketed Sap in the crowd control chain earlier instead of just automatically trinketing the blind. Now he's set far behind. They managed to pull Astral Shift, but not the trinket. And Acro isn't running Smoke Bomb either, so that opening... I'm very surprised to not see Smoke Bomb on the biggest map in the pool. I feel like that has to be a mistake strategically from Acro on the side of making a movie. They had an opening to punish there. Maybe they should have been on a different target like Blizzo, but unfortunately they didn't get a kill off of that decision that Looney made earlier. They've still got mana fairly even. They're still in a good position defensively. is actually running Archangel and Dark Archangel. I'm curious if he dropped the dome talent for his barrier to access that. It allows him to maybe play for a bit more of a long game. We saw Zuniyaki pick Archangel as well against XRB to the Moon. So making a movie are playing for a long game, talent-wise, but strategically, I don't think they're at all playing for that. They're allowing Ratapai to be easily attacked. I would like to see more Novas or Polymorphs to help Ratapai at this point because XRB to the Moon are getting far too much uptime. Yeah, that is true. Ratapai's having to burn through a lot of mana, but he's relatively even with Looney. Now a kidney shot over on Zipai. That's going to be Iron Bark traded out by Looney. Blizzo once again doing a good job defensively, using the Disarm over onto Acro. And I really feel like XRB to the Moon, they need to go onto Ratapai, but they also just need to tag, uh, tab target over onto Acro. Keep up the consistent damage on the Rogue as well. Keep Ratapai second guessing, but Ratapai's getting low. Full Bash going to be used by Looney as he charges in. Ratapai almost in execute range. Can Blizzo connect? Looks like he should be able to survive. He gets pummeled, still dangerously low. Penance gets used. Fear activated by Blizzo as another interrupt. That is going to be the Archangel for Ratapai as he spams out some Shadowmans to stabilize a little bit, but still it's getting interrupted. Finally able to get away, but uh, this, that was a close call. If Akira was playing Smoke Bomb in this position, they have a clear win condition to kill Zipai, dragging him 40 yards away from Looney, but because he didn't select that Smoke Bomb, they don't have that advantage. They're just going for consistent damage, but XRB to the Moon are winning all of the trades. They're ahead on mana as well in this position. Uh, it's looking worse and worse for making a movie on a match point. I'm not sure that they can really find any openings here. Ratapai's on the ropes. Trinkets in desperation. Acro gets stunned up. He trinkets. They know they need to get something done. Maro ice blocks the hex. They need to get a kill here and now, but they don't get the crowd control chain. Looney was able to trinket out and access Iron Bark, hopefully to deny the kill here, making the movie commit a lot of cooldowns with that Shadow Fiend. They switch targets to Blizzo. This is really making the movie's only opportunity is switching targets and catching somebody off guard. Well-timed counterspell on Looney. That's going to put Zipai even further behind, but with that dwarf racial, he removed... If he didn't have the Dwarf Racial right here, I think Seapie would be dead. Nice racial choices from XRB. Perfect strategy, perfect adaptations throughout this. They're looking absolutely unbeatable as Ratapai clings to life with absolutely nothing left. Yeah, Looney's been on point, pushing in, making sure he can get that stun onto Ratapai. Ratapai actually has nothing left in the tank. It's just a matter of seconds before XRB to the moon closes out this game with a Storm Bolt coming in from Blizzo. Just such clean defensive play. That game looked way better from making a movie, but still, XRP to the moon. I think they have on the bench, and here again, it's it's just clinical precision. There was one little uh, dodgy moment there in the start of the game with that blind, but he managed to weather that so storm, and then from there on out, it was kind of a smooth sailing for XRB. Uh, they swap over to the orcs. When, when we have our method black versus tempo storm series, and this one will be very, very juicy because whereas we have Looney, great shot caller, 
BlizzCon champion, Tempo Storm have added Botar to their roster, who is a two-time BlizzCon champion, then. Yeah, this guy is an absolute monster. It's going to be interesting to see. I think Tempo Storm actually got the better end of... Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? And keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.